Hello, this is Peter Englander with the League of Women Voters of Portland, and you are watching the Video Voters Guide. We are in the studios of Metro East Community Media to talk with candidates running in the November 2018 general election. We have invited all candidates who filed for this race. There are many reasons during the busy campaign seasons for candidate accepting or being unable to appear. With me today is Bob Nehemiah, running for State Representative 35th District, who was able to accept our invitation. We are sorry that one of the candidates in this race, Margaret Doherty, has been unable to accept our invitation. We urge voters to visit the League of Women Voters of Oregon website and to use the League's vote411.org website for comprehensive coverage where candidates may also choose to include more information, some including their own YouTube videos. So Bob, what is your top priority and how will you accomplish it? Well, number one to me personally has always been completely stopping the toll roads. I grew up in Silverton, Oregon and I've lived in Tigard all my life, or I mean 30 years now, and uh, to me, uh, allowing toll roads to pay for something that we already paid for is rather insulting to me. It, it really hits hard to the, to the core of, of, of everything that I've always seen in Oregon and grew up with. There's just no way that we should allow toll roads. With all the proposals that I've been seeing uh, for all the different versions of where they want to put the tolls as well, tolling I-5, tolling 205, now and then all of a sudden talking about tolling downtown Portland roads. It, uh, it, it just frightening to see that, that there's nothing in any one of those proposals that allows that money to be used for building uh, more infrastructure for the state. It, to me, it's just literally nothing more than a money grab. Uh, aside from that, there is an interesting thing that has just recently cropped up. It has to do with using GPS as opposed to the systems that are typically used for collecting tolls, like photographing your license plate or various different things like that. And GPS actually is in a lot of cars right now, but they could actually track your position any place on the face of the earth which means that the, the people out here in Gresham are going to be just as subject to uh, as the people in Tigard to having every position that they go to, to the grocery store, to work, to anything that you do tracked by the government and then you are sent a bill somehow uh, about uh, your movements, which also means that there's virtually no privacy after that. Privacy is probably a bigger concern to more people than actually paying the money for we don't want to have the government know what we're doing all of the time so I'm completely against tolls there are far better ways to collect the money uh, I have a detailed plan worked out for what we need to do to get the infrastructure going again in Oregon that's another pro. Any other priorities? Well, uh, PERS. Uh, PERS is number two, and I'm surprised that all the people that I've talked to know quite a bit about PERS. They're, first of all, they know they don't want toll roads. Second of all, they know that PERS is sucking up everything that has to do with education. A lot of people in Tigard, of course, it's a bedroom community, and there's a lot of children going to school there. Tigard Tualatin School District is one of the largest ones in, in Oregon. Yeah, I believe I heard just recently it's it's almost two full percent of the entire population school children is in Tiger Tualatin. So PERS, uh, no matter what we do, is consuming half of the money now that goes to paying for teachers. There's no way around that right now if we continue to um, not try and do something about PERS. It's going to continue to go up. PERS has to be basically capped at some kind of reasonable amount that people get. We have to do something uh, to correct this issue. And I think that has to be done before something else happens. Mostly there's about eight states in the United States right now which are technically in bankruptcy. Oregon is in bankruptcy if you were to apply typical business definitions to it. Uh, 
that may actually go above the states to where they actually work their way up to the Supreme Court, uh, which is going to have to go because nobody will yield on it, um, to say whether or not a state can go bankrupt or not. Okay, well, we've got a couple of other questions, so I want to okay. get to those, too. Well, just, and, just and you keep, mentioned keep education. Keep that in mind. Okay. Education, which I know is your number three, yeah. uh, is in big trouble because of PERS. Yes, yeah, so we'll get to that. So let me ask you our second question. What steps will you take to ensure more or Oregonians are qualified and hired for Oregon jobs? Oregon jobs in general or teacher jobs? Or just Oregon jobs. Oregon jobs? Well. Yeah. That has to do with having an economy without the government in the way. Mm -hmm. uh, the government does have, our, particularly our Oregon government, has a huge number of obstacles in the way for businesses. You get those businesses uh, to where they can freely operate and continue to grow their businesses and hire people, that are, is jobs. Simple as that. Uh, now, I'm a mechanical engineer and I do product development and I work with way more companies than the, the typical individual might because I, I do one product here, another product here, and I talk to that company and this company all, all the time. And the general feedback is, yeah, things are looking up in Oregon just because of the sheer weight of the Trump tax cut finally getting into Oregon. Uh, a thing that would create a huge number of jobs right now is if they gave back that Trump tax cut to the businesses in Oregon that they carefully uh, took just last year. To allow businesses to grow on their own with their own money instead of having to borrow it or uh, you know, get to Aunt Jenny to loan them more money to keep the company going. No, that, that's what needs to be done. Cut the taxes, give back the Trump tax cut to the Oregon businesses, and let them take off. Okay, so let's talk about education. How can the legislature provide stable, adequate, long-term funding for public education? They cannot. They will not, and they cannot do it as long as PERS is in the way. Right now, if you were to just, just pick a, a, a million dollars sent to the Tiger Tualatin School District, half a million goes to PERS, to, to the retirement system. Then that other half a million, you look at how many teachers there actually are, the administrators, the administrators' administrators, the up the ladder clear till you get almost to the governor, and how much money is going over here versus how much actually gets to the teacher, you're lucky to get 10% of that money to the teachers at best. How much is uh, the schools going to look at that? They're going to say they have to make cuts. Even if you give them a Tiger Tualatin school district a million dollars, they will still have to cut a teacher or two. In fact, the last school board meeting that I went to, they were looking at getting $10 million more. And if they didn't get that $10 million, they were looking at how they would cut somewhere around 8 to 15 teachers just in Tigard. $10 million more and having to cut? What's going on? It's PERS. It's PERS is going to eat everything that we want, uh, that we hold dear. Uh, to the future of Oregon is being consumed by something that has, should have been corrected 30 years ago. Basically, we are living with what was done 30 years ago, and they kept kicking down the PERS thing down the road to take care of it tomorrow. Well, tomorrow's here. We've gone over the 50 percent. There's nothing that the public education system can do that will get to the classroom to help our students. Absolutely nothing. So it has to be corrected. It has to be done. It, it has to be uh, a different way. And right now there's an awful lot of uh, talk and some success at, at charter schools. Uh, I'm all for charter schools. And it may take a complete conversion to charter schools to get away from this. 
they're actually in Oregon entitled to about half of the money that is put into the school system. And they're successful, with just as successful, if not more successful, with half of what they're getting now in the public system. Why is that? Well, that's about how much is going to PERS, isn't Got it? it? Okay, well, thank you for coming in. This has been the Video Voters Guide. Thank you for watching. The general election is Tuesday, November 6th. Be sure to inform yourself about the candidates and the ballot measures and exercise your right to vote.